Hello, welcome to another Tool Tech Tips video by PPCs. I'm Matt, and today we're going to check out some drills and taps. So you may be wondering why we're looking at these when we're building PCs. Well, if you didn't know, it comes in really handy sometimes. Maybe if you're working with some distros, or you're just putting in some new panels in your case, you want to mount them using traditional hardware. Well, that's where drilling and tapping comes in. So, let's get right to it. So first things first. One of the most important parts about tapping holes is to start with the proper drill bit. My proper drill bit, I mean the right size. There's tons of charts and stuff you can Google that will give you the whole list of bits and then your tap size or your tap threading and it will let you know exactly the size you should be using. Now, when we're doing stuff like tapping, drilling or tapping acrylic, especially with bigger holes, let's say you're gonna do a G and a quarter hole, where you'd use this 11.8 millimeter drill bit. I usually suggest that you take a nice little file, and if you see here, there's a little kerf usually on your drill bit. I suggest that you file that down a little bit just so it's not quite as sharp. This will really help prevent the drill bit from cracking the acrylic out once it gets to the other side and makes a complete, complete hole. For your smaller bits like this one, this 964 here, you typically won't see the breakout as much, however you could go through and file this a little bit if you want. Obviously this makes it so your drill bits don't work quite as well for harder surfaces like aluminum and steel, which is why I'd suggest using two separate just for acrylic and then your metals. So as I was saying, your taps will come in all different thread types and sizes. Today I'm just going to show you guys this M4 here, this one will be an M4 tap. For M4 taps, I typically use a 964 drill bit. I believe you can get a metric equivalent that uh, fits a little bit better, but if you're in the US, you can find a 964 bit pretty regularly. So now that you've selected your appropriately sized drill bit for your tap, it comes to drilling. So when you do drill your hole for tapping, the key is to keep your drill bit perfectly perpendicular with the surface, so you don't want it to wobble either way, unless of course you do want a hole that goes not straight. Um, however, most prefer the holes to go straight through and it'll provide a much easier time when you're tapping. Your tap will follow the hole you cut, so it is really the most important step here. And there we go. There is one 964 hole ready to tap. As I mentioned before, if you're using a larger drill bit, like I said, this 11.8 millimeter here, used for G and a quarter, you do want to try to make this a little bit smoother and nicer for acrylic. As I mentioned, it's going to take a little bit longer to cut the hole. However, as you can see here, it'll really help not make the hole break out. And voila, no breakout. Clearly, it's melting the plastic more than it is cutting it. However, with a little bit of cleanup, this will be ready for tapping. Now you've got your holes cut, it's time to start tapping. What I usually use when I tap holes is WD-40. No matter what, you do want some kind of lubricant, especially if you're going to be tapping into metal, however, even acrylic, it really does help the whole process. You can get specific cutting fluid, However, WD-40 will always work too. As you saw, we use an electric drill to cut the holes. However, I'll typically recommend using a hand tap to get the holes threaded. This just provides a little more control just to make sure that you can get the tap to follow that hole exactly perfectly straight. We'll start with this nice little M4 guy, and just so you guys are aware, you can use your drill to tap these holes. It's just not as recommended. So let's start by getting a little bit of cutting fluid, or WD-40 here, on our tap. It does get to be a little bit of a mess, but that's what cleanup for is at the end. So let's take our tap, insert it into the hole, make sure it's perfectly perpendicular, just like your drill bit was, and you can start turning. I typically don't use the handles until the threads actually start to engage. Once the tap has gotten all the way through, you can start backing it out gently. 
Now you may have noticed I did push the tap much further through the surface than just the tip. As you can tell, this is a tapered tap, so which is what you will most commonly find. So just to ensure that you get the tap to go all the way through to get to the full diameter of the threading. Otherwise, it technically won't be the right threads. Proof is always in the pudding, so let's see how we did. Perfection. Let's move on to a much bigger size tap, the G and a quarter BSPT. As I mentioned, I use an 11.8 millimeter drill bit to drill this hole. One of my biggest tips I can give you for these larger size holes, especially G and a quarter, as it's really easy to do it with, is to use some kind of guide. As you'll notice, the bigger taps are much harder to keep straight. Even your larger drill bit, it's hard to get a straight hole through it with. So, if you have an old block top, such as this barrel one I had laying around, it'll actually work as a guide for you. So, obviously I don't use this thing anymore, and this doesn't really actually harm it. However, I'll start by threading my tap through one of these pre-existing G and a quarter ports. So, once the tap is just poking through there, now I can take it, place it on top of the hole, and I can hold onto the tap and since this hole I know is square and tap for G and a quarter, once it gets all the way through the next material, it should also be square and G and a quarter threaded. Don't forget your lube. And voila, you have one threaded G and a quarter port. Well, there you have it, folks. That's our episode on how to drill and tap. If you still find yourself with questions even after seeing this, feel free to post them in the comments below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you're wondering where you can find drills and taps for yourself, look no further. Right in the description, I'll have links for those as well, because we carry them at PPCs. If you haven't seen our previous episodes, we have a few other tool tech tips, so feel free to go see that playlist. If you like these videos, leave it a like, and subscribe if you want to see more, because we're going to be right back at you next week with another tool tech tip. Until then, I hope you all have a great day, and happy water cooling!